about horizontal well test. Now, before we move on further about what is a horizontal well test, we have to know what is a horizontal well. Horizontal well is a well with radius RW that goes through an infinite reservoir over a length L with thickness H and then bounded by impermeable beds. For your information, these impermeable beds can be things such as shear or silk. Now, what is the reservoir rock and flute properties that we can find from the horizontal well test? Essentially, permeability, initial pressure, the effective permeability, and also skin factor. Now, let us move on to the comparisons between horizontal and vertical well test. For horizontal well test, the permeability is in three dimensions. But for vertical well test, there is only one average permeability. This is because in horizontal well, the permeability is in x, y, and also z direction. Now, next, the width and length is also taken into account. Okay, this is because the well is drilled horizontally. That's the width and length we have to uh, we have to know. But for vertical well test, there is only one net phase zone, and then we use vertical edge. Next is a uh, pseudo skin factor as z is present, but in vertical well test, there is only normal skin factor. And pseudo skin factor actually occurs because of the partial penetration in y direction. So that's all from me. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Hassan Jikor Kera, and today I'm going to talk about the steps in evaluating well test data. So the first part of evaluating well test data is to identify your flow regime. In identifying your flow regime, you use your pressure transient test. When you use your pressure transient test, you'll use it to identify your major and your distinct uh, flow regimes in your data. Normally, the pressure transient test in horizontal well is much more complex than the pressure transient test in a vertical well. This is due to the 3D nature of the horizontal well. 3D nature. Okay. Uh, also, normally, a vertical well centers in a single flow regime. Example, an infinite radial, an infinite radial regime, or something like that. In a horizontal well, instead of having just the radial flow regime, from our data, we can see that it develops three flow regimes that can occur after the well bore storage effect disappears. So we have three flow regimes that occur after the effect of well bore storage disappears. Okay, now, um, these three flow regimes that we can view from the data is your radial flow regime, which looks somewhat like this. So this is your radial flow regime. And you also have your linear flow regime, which is this. And last but not least, we have our pseudo-radial flow regime, which is like this. So these are the three flow regimes that we can see from our pressure transient test data. Now, in the pressure transient test, normally we use a semi-log derivative uh, and we plot our difference in pressure and our derivative pressure versus our elapsed time. The pressure differences, both uh, pressure difference and derivative difference, is uh, from our transient pressure test. So our graph from this will look something like this. This will be our graph from our pressure transient test. This part that we can see here, this is our well bore storage. Once it starts breaking off and it slopes down, this is our early radial flow. Early means for E for early. And this part that slopes down, this will be our linear our linear flow. And the part of the curve where here m equals to zero, this will be our pseudo radial flow. And here you can see again, this will be late uh, linear flow. And this part here will be late pseudo radial. So basically, as you can see from this graph, we this semi-log graph, we can see uh, we can determine our 
flow regimes. So this is the first part in how we evaluate our data. The second thing that we need to do is we need to apply proper procedure. When you apply proper procedure, each flow regime can be modelled by an equation. There's a separate equation that will be talked about later on by a friend of mine. And this can be used to estimate our reservoir properties that we get such as skin, permeability and so on. At the best, um, only certain groups of analytical properties can be determined directly from the equation. That is why we need to do our transient tests and our well test data. And last but not least, our proper, uh, proper analytical and graphical method must be used so we can achieve more accurate data uh, in order to estimate the rest of the reservoir properties. The last part of the steps in evaluating our horizontal well test is to evaluate the uniqueness and the sensitivity of our data. Because the, we need to measure our uniqueness and the sensitivity of our data to, in order to know how accurate it is. Now, how do we do this? By simulation. In simulation, we use the properties that we have determined from the test, properties that we have determined from the test, and we confirm the consistency and of the analysis and test data. So we do a simulation with the data that we have got, and we check if the data that we get from the simulation is consistent with the other data that we initially had. Simulation can also help us to determine if another set of formation properties can give us a set of data that is more better fit. So this is all from my part and we'll move along to my next roommate. Thank you. Thank you Hasim for your brilliant explanation. Hi, my name is Huda Maisara and I will elaborate on basic flow regimes in horizontal wells. So basic flow regimes in horizontal wells can be classified into three major flow regimes. That is the early time radial flow when the presence of upper and lower boundaries are not felt in the well bowl. This has caused the well to act as an infinite medium. In early time radial flow, the top and bottom boundaries exert their influences. However, the well length in horizontal plane is still significant in this flow. At lead time flow, the influence of upper and lower boundaries can cause another flow regime that is radial flow to occur. That is when the axis of the flow is vertical but the flow is still radial in the horizontal plane. Okay. The major flow regimes can be further classified into five small flows. Early radial flow that falls under early time radial flow heavy radial flow and early linear flow falls under early time linear flow that is also known as intermediate time linear flow and late pseudo radial flow also late linear flow that falls under late time flow the early radial flow when will occur when uh, the area drain or the pressure transient affected by the production will I encounter either of the vertical boundaries in the reservoir. This flow pattern will likely to be elliptical, moving into the reservoir at a given time at higher permeability x axis and lower permeability z axis. And when the well bore is much nearer to one vertical boundary than the other, uh, another flow regime called Hermi radial flow or half radial flow may exist in the well. But when the area affected by the production includes the entire thickness of the reservoir, early linear flow will develop. Eventually, the flow will begin to enter the well bore from beyond the ends of the well. So before the end effects become important in the well bore, the early linear flow continues. But once the end effects become significant in the well bore, a transient period known as late pseudo radial flow begins. And lastly, uh, before it happens, the this flow regime will continue until it reaches one 
uh, side of the reservoir boundaries. And when the pressure transient had reached both sides of the reservoir boundaries, that is when the linear, state linear flow will continue. So that's it about basic flow regimes in horizontal wells. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, so, introducing myself, my name is Ibrahim Zakifli. So, uh, my part is about the uh, pressure behavior graph of uh, horizontal well testing. Okay, uh, before we start the, to interpret the graph, we have to plot it, uh, to plot the graph with um, normalized pressure and pressure derivative versus uh, ellipse line here. Okay, so we got uh, the solid line here which is represent about uh, the normalized pressure and the dotted line is represent um, the pressure derivative okay so uh, at this part at this part we can determine uh, we, we can determine the early time to the flow with the effective uh, permeability as equal to uh, ky K, i'm sorry uh, square root of uh, ky uh, times kz okay this is because uh, you can see the uh, you can see the uh, gra graphical um, tree here. Uh, it's stated here that um, because uh, be uh, this is because uh, it has the, the the fluid are moving from the y and x axis. Okay, and then the second part is intermediate time uh, pseudo radio flow, which is the effective probability is equal to ky. Okay, then this is because uh, the fluid are uh, moving uh, through the y axis only, and then the last last part is um, which is here. It uh, indicate the late time uh, pseudo radial flow, which is the effective probability is square root of k x uh, times k y. So something like here, and then the fluid is moving uh, in the x direction and also z direction. I'm um, sorry, y direction. Okay, so. Um, Okay, and then uh, take into account that well wall storage of uh, horizontal is prominent compared to uh, vertical well. This is because um, more fluid uh, are contact to the uh, reservoir uh, compared uh, with when we compare to the vertical well. Okay, and then uh, we can obtain five data from this uh, graph, which is here. We can determine the direction of the well wall storage. Here we can determine the magnitude of well ball storage and the slope, uh, slope equal to zero we can determine the estimation of vertical permeability okay, and then this one we can indicate that uh, this is effective length of horizontal well and the last part is the effect, estimation of horizontal permeability and uh, reservoir pressure uh, that's all for me thank you assalamualaikum everyone uh, my, my name is Hatim Bushara uh, I would like to give you some information about the pressure equations in horizontal well test and flow regimes. The pressure equations in horizontal well test depends on several parameters. One of those parameters are we have the skin and we have permeability and we have the thickness and also not forget about the initial reservoir pressure which is determined by VI. Uh, last but not least we have the perforation as well for length which uh, we call HW. Uh, this the, the several of parameters of the pressure equations in the horizontal well test, which happen or occurs in different flow regimes. So one of those flow regimes, as we call them, early time radial flow. is happening here. It's early time flow radial flow. So the pressure equations on these flow regimes will, can, be, can be determined from here, from these equations. Uh, we have several terms that you guys might not be familiar with, such as KV and, and KY and L. KV and KL both together, they, they actually represent, represent the effective reservoir permeability, which is there here. This is the effective reservoir permeability. And then we have L, which is producing well length. As we go further more, we have the second flow regions, which they, we call the intermediate time intermediate time linear flow regimes. Also depends on several parameters. Uh, 
which you guys might be familiar with also, which is SZ, which means the pseudo skin factor caused by partial penetrations in vertical directions, what we, which we call it SZ, where S is the mechanical skin factors that you guys are familiar with. For, we go for the third regions, which is the late time radial flow. For the late time radial flow, and then we use this type of equations. I know you guys, I guess most of you that are the similar with the terms. Yeah. Okay, let's recap what we learned in our video presentation. Earlier in the video, we defined horizontal well test and then we compared uh, between horizontal well test and vertical well test. Next, we explained about the steps in evaluating horizontal well test. There are three steps uh, identifying the flow regimes, applying the appropriate procedures, and evaluating the uniqueness and sensitivity. And I also elaborated on basic flow regimes. And my friend also explained on pressure behavior graph in horizontal wells, where he drew the graph and explained which part of the graph is for which flow regimes. And lastly, the pressure equations involved in horizontal wells. Okay, I hope you enjoy our video. Thank you for watching.